The next things we're gonna talk about are things we do to prep the dog before we start training in the search area. So one of those things is going to be conditioning or habituating our dogs to a harness. So you guys have all been here for a while, so your dogs should all be well used to a harness by now. But um, most dogs, I would say, aren't completely bothered by having a harness put on them. Some dogs are quite bothered by one if they've never felt one before. So that's something you want to have owners working on before the first day of class. So that's their, their pre uh, harness homework, and so when we are habituating a dog to any piece of new equipment, we're going to use high rates of reinforcement. So I'll reward the dog just for me putting it on. I'll take it off immediately, reward the dog for me taking it off. So both on and off get rewards. I'll put the harness on the dog and encourage the dog to come forward. If they take one step toward me, I'll reward them. And you just want to alter it depending on how worried the dog is. So I have had a couple dogs where if I owned them, I absolutely would take the time to break down and habituate them to harness, but they had a very adverse reaction to having them put on, and their owners weren't really on board with the homework of getting the dog used to it. So of the hundreds and hundreds of dogs I've trained, I do have two dogs that work without a harness. And one of them is a Shiba Inu, and she started training with me at eight weeks old. Super cool little dog knows a bunch of tricks, has her CGC, she does a whole bunch of different fun things with her dog. Her dog does not like change, extreme levels. So she brought her home at eight weeks old, put a cute little pink collar on her, the puppy hated it. We got her used to having a collar on, no problem. She rides with her dog in a dog car seat, which is not my favorite method of transporting dogs, but that's what worked for her and her car and her dog. So that requires the dog to wear a little doggy harness that gets clipped into the seatbelt, put it on the dog. The dog absolutely hated it, but we got her over it. Those are the only two pieces of equipment that dog ever accepted. So when she outgrew her cute little pink collar, her owner just went and bought the exact same collar and a larger size, put it on her, and the dog acted like we set her on fire. Extreme reaction to a new piece of equipment. We were able to get her over that one, but we were really never able to get her to accept any harness besides the one she wears in her car seat. Now, if I owned the dog, I guarantee you I would have been able to get her to do that, but the owner had a lot of stuff she was doing with the dog. It wasn't a big priority to her, and so at some point I said, okay, I'm gonna let you stop working on this so we can continue forward and get the dog searching. Um, she wasn't a big puller. She was a dog that capped very nicely. She was more of an internal dog. So she was a dog that on the start line would get mildly excited externally, meaning that she would show excitement very mildly versus an external dog is vibrating and pulling and really animated with their body movement. The second one is a rescue McNabb who was basically feral till six months old when he got rescued, and it was the same process. The first time we put a collar on him, he acted like you lit him on fire. He really didn't like it. And then we started doing the harness work, prepping him for sporting detection, and he would just freeze. Absolute catatonic, completely stressed out, out of his mind, frozen. And she's a great dedicated owner, and she worked with him and worked with him and worked with him. So he would tolerate it, but he would come out to search like an action figure. He would be like this, and then when he was searching, he would start doing these things where they're crossing their feet as they're walking, and I said, ah, forget it, just take it off. It's not worth it. We've got it, again, that's another dog that knows about a million different behaviors. She does rally as well and competes with them, and so there's an exception to every rule, as I say, uh, for the most part in dogs, so I have had two clients that I permitted to do searching without a harness. There were also two dogs that supported that. Again, her dog, very internal dog, what we call caps very nicely, so on the start line, he's very quiet, he's very intense. He doesn't need to be super active to be really intense in his working. So, if you come across dogs that absolutely will not accept a harness, it's not the end of the world, but try your best to get all your clients to do their homework, just for the sake of the dog as well, just to be a better rounded dog that's more comfortable with having different things touch them and be on their body. We post our social media videos to our website, Learberg.com, a week or two, before we post them to our YouTube channel. These early release videos can be found on the front page of our site or by going to the site and selecting video on demand from the toolbar and then select free videos. Thank you for watching. <laughs>